I'm B-Town, and I make videos about games I love. Wandering the wasteland can be pretty lonely, so today we're going to be ranking every companion in Fallout 4 from worst to best. Thanks for being here, and I'm very excited to go on this adventure with you. Now let's get started with the bottom of the list. The worst companion in Fallout 4 is... Strong. I really like this character, but he is an awful companion. This big green bastard's great in a fight, but that's about it. I mean, I totally understand why people love Strong. He's got a great personality. But if you don't need something completely obliterated, this is not your guy. Overall, he feels like an incomplete idea. An unfinished character. Fallout has had some pretty awesome super mutant characters. Unfortunately, he's just not one of them. One of my big complaints is that he doesn't have a quest, despite rambling on constantly about finding the milk of human kindness. His default weapon is a pipe rifle which also just isn't that great oh and let me explain that just a little bit more most of the companions in fallout 4 come with a default weapon that default weapon has unlimited ammo so it's really tied to how effective your companion is in battle you could swap out the weapon but when you do that you also have to give them the ammunition to sustain it it's not a huge deal for strong because he can pick up random things off the ground and off dead enemies he's also really good with a melee weapon but pipe rifles they're just kind of not it strong's perk is also pretty bad most of the companions have a hidden stat called affinity. Like anyone you meet, there are things that they like and things that they don't like. If you get that invisible number up to 1000, you unlock a special perk. Strong's perk is called Berserk and it's really not worth it at all. It gives you 20% more melee damage when your health is below 25%. It's a nice little bonus, but the problem is gaining affinity with Strong is a real pain in the ass. He is an absolute hater. Strong dislikes a ton of stuff, even like basic gameplay mechanics like gathering junk and lock picking. So he's constantly mad at you. Overall, Strong has a ton of issues that keep him from being a great companion, even though he's a lot of fun and I highly suggest interacting with him if you have the chance. And cock. He's the only romanceable ghoul in the Fallout franchise. No judgment, I get it, ghouls can be sexy now, it's a thing. And be honest with yourself, you've probably done worse things to earn the lover's embrace bonus. Hancock comes with a default shotgun, but I immediately swap it out. I can't stand watching him miss targets two feet away, it drives me absolutely crazy. If you max out your affinity with Hancock, you get a perk called Isodoped Turbo Trash. If you currently have 250 radiation or more, your critical hits regen 20 20% faster. That means you have to give up at least 25% of your life to regen crits faster? Bumpkiss. But if you really want to unlock it, you can always just get naked because Hancock's a pervert and he likes that a lot. Right from the start, Hancock's difficult to get a hold of. To gain him as a companion, you have to do a side quest called the Big Dig, which is actually very long and very difficult to accomplish at early levels. He's practically worthless. I mean, when we were on our adventure together, him and I got into a fight after I accidentally liquefied a Diamond City guard. He's cool, he's stylish, he is a nice character. He's, he's got some funny one-liners, I will definitely give him that. But he doesn't even come close to comparing to some of the more useful companions in the game. Piper. Ah, uh, you can't miss this reporter, she's in Diamond City. I feel like she was specifically designed to be a very early game companion. Her affinity perk is called Gift of Gab, and it gives you double XP when you discover new areas or use persuasion and dialogue. She's a moral character who likes when you do positive things, nice things, so she's relatively easy to max out. Her default weapon is a 10mm pistol, which is capable. She's not great in combat, but she's also not awful either. Piper is just kind of generic and underwhelming. The best part about her is actually the the romance option. I don't want to spoil it, but there are some really funny interactions if you start dating Piper. She can get pretty jealous. Old Longfellow. You meet this distinguished gentleman in Far Harbor. He's got a lot of history in the area with a ton of great lore, and he hates the children of Adam, which is something we have in common. Linking up with Old Longfellow gives you access to the Hunter's Wisdom Perk. Pretty fantastic, actually. You gain 25% damage and energy resistance from animals and sea creatures. That's really, really useful, because, I mean, animals are all over the wasteland. Longfellow's packing a lever action rifle, which means he can definitely contribute to combat. There's some great dialogue, some nice writing. The only reason I'm really ranking him so low is that your time with Longfellow is usually pretty short because he ceases to be really that fantastic outside of the DLC. But when you start Far Harbor, I definitely suggest taking the opportunity to dismiss your current companion and ride with Longfellow. He's pretty awesome. Porter Gage. 
I feel like this one's gonna be controversial. First off, this guy is an opportunistic rat. I just don't like him as a character. Yeah, he looks badass and he totally makes sense. He's a raider, meaning he's a piece of shit. I just don't like hanging out with him though, despite his cool eye patch. Leading with the positive, Porter's default weapon is a handmaid and he is amazing in battle. Rolling with a companion that has an AK that never runs out of ammunition is incredible. Everything else about him is annoying. His perk is called Lessons in Blood, and it has two primary components. Part one, you gain 5% more XP per kill. That doesn't matter at all. Gage is the companion you get from the Nuka World DLC, meaning you're probably around level 30 before you even meet him. 5% more XP per kill is pointless. The second component is a little bit better, and that's just a flat plus 10 damage resistance. That's nothing to scoff at. But the real breaking point for me is actually the conceit of the character. He's a raider, and he likes when you do raider stuff like murdering and stealing he wants you to become the new overboss take over nuka world and then take over the rest of the commonwealth well i don't always want to do that actually to be honest i rarely want to do that i actually really like nuka world as a dlc but i hate being forced down the evil path i like evil playthroughs i just don't like being forced to do it so i rarely raid the settlements in the commonwealth this is not a thing i do you know i start the dlc i play everything i want and when it starts to get boring i just turn on the raiders and it becomes a big battle royale in the middle of the park but here's where gauge is limited for me as a companion because as soon as you turn on the raiders gauge will turn on you and become hostile it makes perfect sense for the character and i'm actually glad that it's structured that way but for my play style it just means my time with gauge is going to be very 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 limited i'm never going to be able to use him outside of nuka world as soon as i'm done cleansing that dlc of raiders i'm back to the commonwealth to hook up with some other companion x688 he is a very powerful, yet very situational companion. X6 is an Institute Courser. He comes with the default Institute Rifle, which is incredibly strong. I mean, when I was bombing around with him, we ran into an Alpha Deathclaw that was a whole pain in the ass, and we made super short work of it. We even had a victory teabag together. It was an awesome team building moment. The issue here is that you don't get access to X6 until very deep into the Institute quest line. I'm talking past point of no return. There's a lot of things you forfeit in order to get access to X6, and it's a big commitment. So in a weird way, it feels like like getting him as a consolation prize for cutting off so many other companion options. His affinity perk is called Shield Harmonics, and that increases your energy resistance by 20. That's another perk that I just don't kind of see the point of, if I'm being honest. At this point, you are deep into the Institute quest line, the Institute being the enemies who most frequently use energy weapons. So gaining an additional 20 resistance to energy means very little at this point in the game. It's kind of a worthless perk. Why would you bother doing that when Ballistic Weave exists. Despite how strong he is, he really is restricted to an Institute playthrough, which is a shame. I do like him. I wish he had a little bit more of an expanded scope and you could have access to him just a smidge earlier. Deacon. Ah, the sneaky boy, who's actually not really that sneaky. I don't think Deacon is really that much stealthier than other companions, even though that's kind of the theme around his character. One big bonus is he comes with a default sniper rifle, so that's pretty cool. Maxing out his affinity is super duper easy, and that unlocks a perk called Cloak and Dagger. It's uh, actually broken in a really complicated kind of way. I'll spare you the long explanation. The short version is it has poor interactions with the perks Ninja and Mr. Sandman. You gotta get every Thing in a very specific order to make sure that you're getting maximum bonus. If you do it in the right order, you actually get a really big sneak attack bonus. If you do it in the wrong order, you're going to nerf yourself. I think it's kind of cool. His personality is pretty neat. Although if you don't change his outfit, he's going to do that weird thing where like every time you look away, he's going to be in a different disguise and it always freaks me out every single time. Still, McCready. This pushy prick still thinks he's the mayor. Look, I don't just let any bitch into my town, and I'm taking a risk making an exception for you. I absolutely love that they brought back the mayor of Little Lamplight as a companion. He's super easy to find as well. He's in the back room at the third rail in Good Neighbor. McCready is just a straight up mercenary for hire. A few caps is all the convincing he needs to join forces with you. He's also romanceable, but unlike his combat loyalty, you cannot buy your way into his pants. You're going to have to raise his affinity for that, which is pretty easy. He's not the most morally good character, so being a bit of an asshole.
Assault will win him over. That'll earn you the perk Kill Shot. That gives you a 20% greater chance to hit an enemy's head in vats. Probably one of the best companion perks overall in the game. It's amazing, actually. Kind of like Deacon, his default weapon is a sniper rifle. So rolling with McCready greatly increases your long range effectiveness. He's got some good dialogue, some good story bits. He's a lot of fun to bomb around the wasteland with. I am definitely a McCready fan. Okay, next up is going to be a little bit of a weird one. Robots. There are a bunch of different robot companions you can bring along on your adventure. They're all a little different, but the thing they have in common is the ability to be upgraded in a robot workbench. First up, and probably the first companion you'll meet in Fallout 4 is Codsworth. By default, without the DLC, he just kind of sucks. He comes equipped with a buzz blade and a kind of hilarious flamethrower. Of all the robots, he's the only one with an unlockable perk. It's called Robot Sympathy, and it gives you plus 10 damage resistance against robots, energy attacks, and other mechanical devices. I mean, it's fine in the early game. It's sure, it's fine. I mean, you are looking for any advantage you can in a fight against robots. They are relatively tanky in the early game. When you talk to him, he'll occasionally give you purified water, which is also nice, especially good on a survival run. The thing that I really love about Codsworth is that if you give yourself a name that's in his like little name database, he'll chit chat with you using your character name the entire time. That's really neat and it makes the game feel more personal and real. When you think about it, Codsworth is actually the only character who knows who you are and has a backstory with you. And it's interesting to see that continue to develop throughout the course of the game. The next robot you'll come in contact with is probably Ada. She's wonderful. She's really funny. She's really fun. I don't know. Everybody kind of falls in love with Ada. She's got such a lovely personality. Ada is your first point of contact and kind of the driving force through the Automatron DLC, which leads us into the final group of robots, which are customizable robots. You can just totally just make your own companion and it's pretty awesome. Codsworth and Ada can also be customized once you have the workbench unlocked. By default, they're pretty bad, but once you start tinkering with the robots, holy shit, they become pretty amazing pretty quickly. Their weapon arsenal is outrageous. Like, you can put nukes on them. They could even self-destruct. You can increase their hit points, their carry weight. You can even give them hacking and lockpicking. I probably could have put them a little bit higher, but the robots do have a few problems. A, the personality. That robot shit gets kind of old after a while. Their pathfinding is really bad. Most of the companions have pathfinding issues, but the robots are at the top of the list. I don't know why they can't make their way around simple obstacles. Neither Ada nor the customizable robots offer a companion perk, and that's kind of a big deal. Preston Garvey. I know, I know, another settlement needs your help. I think a lot of people disregard Preston because he's so annoying, but if you actually use him as a companion, Preston's pretty awesome. I mean, first bit of business, he is romanceable, and he looks amazing in a corset. Check that out, come on. As I'm sure you would totally expect, you have to maintain a really high moral standard to win over Preston, but when you max him out, you unlock one of the best companion perks in the game. United We Stand. Like, get this, this is outrageous. Your damage resistance is increased by 20 points, and you deal out an additional 20% damage when you're outnumbered at least three to one. It's conditional. You have to be outnumbered three to one, bare minimum for this to proc. But holy shit, that is a massive, massive, massive statistical increase. And think about it. You are constantly outnumbered. Raiders come in groups. Animals come in packs. Or even bloke flies. You can get four or five of them surrounding you at any given time. This perk is hugely impactful. And you can hook up with Preston within the first hour of the game. So you can get it right away. If I had to take points away for anything, it's that Preston's default weapon is that damn laser musket. But don't sleep on Garvey just because he has the personality of a wet sock. Nick Valentine. Who doesn't love Valentine? He's the synth detective you meet during the main quest. He's a good person. He has a great personality. Although he's not romanceable. I mean, I'm just saying it's not possible. If you were curious, maybe that's a thing that you were thinking maybe you'd like to do. You cannot romance him. Besides him just being an awesome character in general, there is one major bonus to rolling with Valentine. He can hack terminals. It's not 100% guaranteed, but you can just keep trying and eventually he'll unlock it. When you have Valentine doing all your hacking for you, that means that you don't have to invest in intelligence at all. No points in intelligence means that idiot savant is on the table. This one thing alone puts Nick Valentine right into the elite class of companions. He has a default pipe revolver, which isn't that great, but it is good against small enemies, bugs, rodents, things like that. Close to metal is the perk you unlock with Nick, and it actually doesn't make a lot of sense. The perk is actually hacking related. It gives you one more password at terminals, and the cooldown after failing a hack is reduced by 50%. Uh, who gives a shit? 
Honestly, it's, it's the bad perk. Number one, if you have Nick with you, it's completely irrelevant. Number two, you can just back out of terminals and hard reset them anyway. I have no use for this perk whatsoever. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Nick would probably be a top tier companion based on his awesome gumshoe personality and his wholesome outlook on life. And he has an absolutely fantastic companion quest called Long Time Coming. You can only get this quest from Nick. I'm not gonna drop any spoilers, but do yourself a favor and do not miss it. It's a fantastic quest. Kate. Yes, she is romanceable. She's cute. She's Irish. I get it. But the game has been out 10 years. We have to stop with the gooning and fanfiction, boys. It's starting to get creepy. Just fucking calm down. Kate is the cage-fighting drug addict you find in the combat zone. She's a true brawler who comes equipped with a default double-barrel shotgun and baseball bat. She's always down for a bar fight, and every once in a while, she'll pass you a couple extra chems. Like Valentine, Kate has an additional ability. She can pick locks. Hugely useful in the early game and keeps you from having to dump a bunch of points into pursuit. Sadly, Kate's affinity perk is actually busted. It's called Trigger Rush. According to the description, it's supposed to regen your action points 25% faster when your health falls below 25%. I guess calling it busted would be wrong because it's just not how the perk works at all. It allows you to regen your action points 50% faster when you fall below 25. So when you spend a bunch of action points, they regen quicker. There's no health involved at all. It sounds kind of nice and kind of useful, but it's actually not, especially the later in the game you get it'll just trigger less and less and less and less it's not a bad perk it's not going to hurt your gameplay in any sense it's just not very useful one of the things i find most interesting about kate is actually her companion quest benign intervention the really cool part is that if you do that quest there are different outcomes that could actually flip her affinity from one way to another like polar opposites which is really really cool kate is a super powerful top tier companion she's fantastic in combat she's got an amazing lock picking skill she's got a funny, fun personality. And there's no prerequisites. You don't have to reach a certain level or do any story quests. You could literally run from Vault 111 to the combat zone and hook up with Kate. Paladin Dance. Dance is so awesome for so many reasons. Where do I even start? Because of his power armor, he has 210 carry weight. That's even more than strong. You could load Dance up with weapons and trash you find in the wasteland. He's such a great pack mule. That armor he's wearing is also completely indestructible. You don't have to maintain it or do anything to it, but there are ways that you can actually upgrade Paladin Dance's armor, and that also will become indestructible when he's wearing it. If you do a bunch of Brotherhood of Steel friendly things like using power armor and modifying weapons, you'll max out his affinity and unlock a perk called Know Your Enemy. This perk is crazy. I'm going to put it right there at the top. This is like the best companion perk in the game by far. It gives you a 20% damage bonus against feral ghouls, super mutants, and synths. Basically the most prevalent enemies in the game. Now you just do 20% more damage. Dance is also romanceable. So if you have a Buzz Lightyear kink, here's your chance. There really is no downside to dance except for the fact that it's going to be a fair amount of time before you you actually get access to him as a companion. He opens up for me generally about halfway through a run normally, but that could be a little bit earlier for you if you bum rush the Brotherhood of Steel quest line. Curie. At first glance, might not seem like she's one of the best, but hang on, let me explain. When you first come into contact with Curie, she is a nanny bot located in Vault 81. You could totally miss her. First, she's in a secret part of the vault, then you have to do a side quest, and then you finally unlock her, and she's just a nanny bot. She's basically Codsworth with a cute French accent. And this version sucks. It absolutely sucks. I think most people stop there because she's just a robot. You can upgrade her. Yay, whoop de doodle By this point in the game, you probably already have five robots anyway that you're not using. This one specifically gives you stim backs. I mean, that's nice and all, but I mean, who gives a fuck? Oh, this nanny bot has a secret. If you keep bringing her along as a companion, eventually she will ask you to help her become human. At that point, you can take her to the memory den in Good Neighbor and get her placed inside of a synth body like the cute little one you've been looking at with the little bob haircut. I mean, my heart, my heart. This version of Curie, she's basically indestructible with a staggering 670 health. She's romanceable and also my personal preference. It's the short hair for me. And it's not just that she's cute, she's also a very forgiving partner. She didn't even mind when I accidentally launched her out of the map with the 2076 baseball bat. 
courtesy of the Bethesda QA team, Curie is also the proud owner of yet another bugged companion perk. This one's called Combat Medic, and it just straight up doesn't work. It's supposed to heal you for 100 points if you drop below 10% once a day, but it literally does nothing. But it doesn't matter because Curie don't need no perk to be amazing. Not a lot of companions require this much effort, like Dance, for example. You will eventually unlock him when you play the quest. I mean, even if you're not playing the railroad, Deacon just follows you around like a creep all the time anyway, hiding in corners and shit. But Curie is a lot of work. You have to do a side quest, you have to really invest time and energy. But oh man, if you do it, you will be rewarded with easily one of the best companions in the game. She's our number two that's a little bit better. And I'm sure if you've been paying attention, you can kind of guess who that is. But really quick, I just wanted to thank you again for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hadn't played with some of these companions in a very, very long time. This was a wonderful excuse. It felt like I was revisiting old friends. No more delays. The bestest boy, I mean the best companion in Fallout 4 is dog meat. I mean, come on, look at him. It's dog meat. <laughs> <laughs> How you treat dog meat reflects on your moral character. Not giving him welding goggles and a bandana is animal abuse, goddammit. There are some under the hood differences between dog meat and the other companions in this game. First and foremost, he is by far the most loyal. None of that finicky affinity nonsense. Dog meat loves you unconditionally. You can be the hero of the wasteland or a cannibalistic monster. Dog meat don't care, he loves you. Since he doesn't use the affinity system, you actually unlock his perk the good old fashioned way by using perk points. It's called attack dog and it basically just improves what dog meat was already doing anyway dog meat's not the best in combat but how he contributes is by grabbing enemies making them easy targets and enhancing your vats chances attack dog just makes that better you can command dog meat to do a bunch of other useful things like maybe grabbing the cryo later while you're still level one but there's one truly massive bonus to rolling with dog meat nobody knows if it's a bug or a feature but using dog meat as a companion does not void out the Lone Wanderer perk. There are some pretty great companion perks, but Lone Wanderer is just an order of magnitude better. That's a huge bonus while still getting all of the benefits of having a companion. That is my favorite way to play Fallout 4. Just me, dog meat, in a wide open wasteland, ready for adventure. Thanks again for watching. That's all for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to drop a comment down below and let me know who your favorite companion in Fallout 4 is. I'm not just saying that for like some YouTuber engagement thing. I genuinely enjoy reading the comments. It's one of my favorite things to do. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you again really, really, really soon.